Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, X, and Rumble. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, onto the show. Since I was a young kid, I always wanted to do something great. He was one of the best conditioned athletes in the world. Kurt Angle went and trained at Fox Country. He was determined to be Olympic champion. It was the proudest moment of my life. What am I going to do now? Oh, it's true! It's damn true! He had great chemistry with anybody he stepped foot in the ring with. That's how good he was. The irony of the success in the bright light is going to be very alluring. But then there's a dark side. Four breaks in two and a half years. I just wanted to keep going until I couldn't go any longer. This Olympic gold medalist, I mean, you think he's bulletproof, but nobody is. I was so out of control. It makes my story look very lame. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 560. Available now on Peacock is Angle, a documentary that delves into the life of Olympic gold medalist and WWE superstar Kurt Angle, exploring the triumphs, tragedy, and motivation that drove a gifted young athlete from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to global superstardom Angle also marks the feature film debut from director Alex Perry, who I'm glad to say joins me now on the podcast. How are you, Alex? I am good, man. Thank you so much for having me. I love the show and I love the podcast. I love the, mo- the movie Angle. Um, I am a huge, you know, wrestling head, more so when I was younger, when, you know, wrestling was like these big ratings juggernauts, you know, WWE, WCW, um, all that stuff. Kurt Angle is was and forever will be one of my favorite wrestlers so as soon as i saw this documentary was available i had to jump at a chance to watch it and talk to you about it what's really interesting about kurt is that anyone who knows his story knows that it is the makings of a great sports biopic it really is like all the stuff that he goes through and the accomplishments that he has what's interesting to me though alex is that this is a movie that more focuses on kind of like the pre wwe career almost the legendary law of Kurt Angle as opposed to the pop uh, stardom of Kurt Angle. Was that decision always something that you were interested in? Because I know you were, were a big WWE fan as well. That's how you knew Kurt. But the background, the the amateur wrestling career, the Olympics and all the stuff that he achieved pre, uh, you know, jumping into, you know, uh, Vince McMahon's uh, squared circle, um, that stuff is fantastic. So how did that kind of come about that that will be the focus of the movie? Well, not only at first did I want it to be the focus of the movie, at very first, when it was just an, like, you know, an inkling of an idea, it was actually the only thing I wanted to make it about. Uh, mm. I wanted to do a very like surprising 30 for 30, almost ESPN 30 for 30, that was a sports story specifically. Uh, but dealt with this guy who everyone knows for another reason, you know? And I, 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 you know, I figured out pretty quick that doing just that story would be the wrong way to go on this, on this one. And that I wanted to explore his whole life. Um, and there are many reasons for that. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I really wanted to tell a story uh, that, you know, was, surprising to pro wrestling fans and very engaging to non pro wrestling fans. And the middle ground of that was telling Kurt's whole life, but spending great amount of time on his, you know, I I hate to call it real sport in terms, in terms of pro wrestling, but in terms of his, um, you know, and they themselves called it real though. They, when they first introduced them, they said the only, the first real Olympic gold medalist in WWE history uh, but I, I really wanted to fo- focus on his Olympic achievements um, in order to engage that 
broader audience as well as surprise wrestling fans. And a couple of pro wrestling fans have called it surreal. Mm. And that is probably my favorite reaction to it so far, because that is the exact thing I was aiming for, for them. Um, I apologize that I couldn't get more TNA time in, uh, maybe an extended cup Sunday, but, um, but yeah, we, we, that, that's why I, I, I chose to, um, structure the film that way. I know that you and Kurt had worked previously with that, um, yeah. with that really excellent funny or die video where he's trying to get back into, uh, uh, Olympics and, um, he's trying out all these varied sports and you had, um, the other, great wrestling superstar Rob Van Dam is kind of like his Mr. Miyagi helping him out with that. I mean, that's just fantastic stuff. But <laughs> when you have the idea to make a documentary about him, that's a different type of project, different set of rules, different, yeah. you know, different, you know, uh, level of commitment from both of you. What it was it like trying to get to, to convince him to become involved yeah. with something like that, especially since I, I'm sure that, you know, he could talk about his pro wrestling career all day, but when it comes to yep. that other parts of his life, um, maybe, uh, I don't know, was there, was there any type of hesitation in his part not to go down that road? Was he ready uh, in his life to to delve back and in, in, in dive into the uh, circumstances high and low that made him the man that he was today? I'm really curious about that. Yeah, it took me, uh, you know, Candidly, it took me a long time to convince him. Um, we had, you know, Kurt also, uh, and, and this goes for a lot of guys who um, live, uh, you know, and have, you know, tumultuous periods of their life like Kurt did. You know, they're, they're someone with fame and success and, you know, some, you know, financial success as well. Um, a lot of people come and try to take advantage of these type of people, especially when, they're experiencing a tumultuous time of their life like Kurt did with his addiction. Mm. Uh, so Kurt had his guard up and I don't blame him for that at all. And I knew why he had his guard up. You know, I had, you know, I had, I had known him. I had actually known him already when he had some people try to take advantage of him for certain business, you know, business things or anything like that. Um, it happens. It happens to everybody who has money. And when someone, you know, is a, is a little bit more vulnerable in their life, like Kurt was at, at a time, um, you know, there's always, you know, sharks in the water who are going to try to attack. Uh, so I understood that, that it was going to take some time for me to convince that Kurt that I wasn't one of those people. I wasn't one of those sharks who were just in the water to, you know, take a bite out of his success and, bring it and bring it for myself um it, it was good that we already had a relationship because of that video we made and you know we had we had texted here and there throughout the years um and i was you know asking him questions about his story throughout the years and kind of warming him up to the to it and then finally when i asked uh i would say after i asked him it would probably took a, like between four and six months to to convince him to give me the rights to it and yeah, I, I, I didn't mind that process whatsoever. It felt very organic. It felt very natural to me. I knew the circumstances. I knew, I knew I was going to have to fight for it. You have to fight like hell for every film, every, every little piece of every film when you want to make it. So, um, that was fine with me, but it probably did take about six months to convince him. Uh, and then once he gave me, you know, I, I think during that six month time period, I had already started like working on it and stuff. And I started sh to show him a couple things, little tiny things here and there, uh, and show him a, like what my plans were and stuff. And I think he just, you know, he, he just knew I was serious about it and he knew I wasn't gonna, you know, uh, try to screw him and make, go, go make some like reality show pilot or something like that. You know, I wanted yeah. to, uh, you know, I wanted to do justice. I wanted to. You know, my, my goal from the very beginning was to make the definitive Kurt Angle documentary. Um, you know, he has such a, a dense story that, you know, the definitive one, uh, you know, would probably end up being a little bit longer version of this one. Um, however, uh, you know, I, I, I'm very proud with where we ended up. Um, and and I, I would call it the definitive Kurt Angle documentary today. I think so as well. And. I think the reason why it is that is because not only the work that you put into it in regards to the great interviews, the archive footage, but I think when you have someone like Kurt involved in anything, 
um, there's a commitment to it from his end that he wants nothing less than the best. And when, especially when it comes to his life story, I mean, we've seen it in his life, whether it be his um, high school football career or his uh, amateur wrestling, Olympic wrestling, the pro wrestling, all that stuff. Everything that he wants to get his hands on, he wants to be the best at it. So I'm curious, when it comes to him being a collaborator in regards to a documentary about his own story, once he says, I'm in, what type of uh, intensity you know, he talks about intensity, yeah. integrity, you know, he has all that, that, that thing <laughs> that he had. It, it, does he bring that to this project as well? And do you, does that immediately up your game as well as like, holy crap, I've got to match this guy's uh, focus and intensity because he, if he's in and he wants he wants this to be the definitive thing, i got to really match that intensity as well and up my game as well. I'm really curious about that kind of collaboration. Oh, no, that's a great question. Um, I think that God, it, humbly, I think that Kurt actually found it jarring my intensity uh, when, mm. when, it, when it came to this. Um, I am very much like him uh, in those ways uh, when it comes to, you know, I, I'm, I try to live and breathe one thing while I'm doing it. And um, I think that he respected that right away because he, that, that, that's his, that's his, that's his thing. He, you know, he's all in on, on what he's doing. He's, he's going to do it the best. Um, even if it's something bad, like taking painkillers, um, no one took painkillers like Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he, he, you know, he, and, and it's it, when his mom says that in the archival footage, uh, it's one of my favorite lines in the movie when she says that when he does something, he does it the best. Uh, but it, it was almost immediately like organically, we organically, we were on the same level right away. I, I, I wouldn't say that like I, I pulled him up or he pulled me up. I think like organically, we just saw in each other right away two serious people who take things seriously, going to take this very seriously. We didn't even have to speak about that. Um, I, I, it was just very obvious to both of us that that's the direction we were going in. And I, on day one, you know, I, I was texting him every question and everything I needed to know, and he was answering me back right away. Um, and that's the way it went for years, uh, it, it, you know, for, for, for a solid three year stretch, I would say I, I, uh, texted Kurt every day and, uh, you know, I, I was having him, you know, d do things like, um, you know, n n you know, he, uh, like uh, one of the little tiny things I did in this movie was all the props you see in the B roll is like actually authentic things from Kurt's life. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like the Olympic singlet that's sitting on the chair, it was like the actual Olympic singlet he wore in the Olympics. And the National Wrestling Hall of Fame was so nice to send that to us. But one of the things I would ask her to do, I'd be like, send me this or send me this or send me this. And that's a really annoying thing to have to do uh, when you have to like find something, pack it up, go to FedEx, get it off to me. And you have no idea. He has no idea like why I'm doing this. He hasn't seen anything yet or anything. And he just trusted, you know, he just trusted um, when it came to. So when like when it came to the intensity of both of us, you know, it, it was just so organically already there. It was never like a discussion or anything. We just went all in. And from my from my side, I totally expect that from all, any of the elite level athletes, like you say. Like I heard like Kobe Bryant, like, you know, I, I loved Kobe Bryant um, a lot. I, I'm a huge, huge basketball fan. And when the filmmakers were making the documentary about them, they said it was kind of like a nightmare uh, because he was just so intense about it. Um, However, that's what I want. So that's what I want. And uh, because I am, and I kind of am the guy who gets annoyed when someone's not answering my text at 3 a.m. <laughs> about, mm -hmm. about some ridiculous question about their life. So in that context, uh, I appreciated everything, everything, single thing he did for, for this because, oh man, um, I annoy, I, a lot of people would be annoyed and whatever the next subject is for me, I, I just, it, it, Kurt, Kurt set a very high bar with how, communicative he was and how um helpful he was with just every aspect of the process from pitching the thing to all the way to right now to, to releasing the thing and all, everything in between which is so so much um so uh so i thank him for that yeah when it came to his interviews that intensity is matched with also his vulnerability and his transparency as well um what was it like 
the interview process. I mean, you speak, you know him for a while, you're texting back and forth, you're, you guys are friends, but now you're hitting a different level of intimacy, um, talking about things in his life that I'm sure is incredibly personal and put, it can put him in an incredibly vulnerable state at times. What was it like prepping for that and, and, and filming that and, um, and then having him, I'm sure watching it afterwards because it's one thing to, you know, to, to be on camera, but when you watch yourself afterwards and you're talking about these kind of things that maybe he hasn't talked about in a while would have been quite, um, quite an experience for both of you. Mm-hmm. Well, I knew that Kurt was going to be open with us. Uh, I didn't expect him to be that open. So when it came to being vulnerable and being open and giving us really long winded answers about these very difficult things that he went through, that was a surprise to me just as much as it was to uh, our audience. Um, I, you know, I, I had the questions ready to go as I knew, I knew Kurt's life very, very well. And I knew every, you know, I, you know, we tackled it for, you know, three full days uh, in, uh, in our interview process with him. Uh, but did I, ex- I didn't expect him to go into that level of depth and give answers that were, um, just that personable to him. And because I had seen a lot of Kurt interviews in the past and I, I, they didn't strike, this one struck me as different. He, for whatever reason, chose this venue um, to really open up. And I would love to say that, oh yeah, that was me. I pulled it out of him because I'm brilliant, but that's, that's not at all what happened. It's, I sat back and was in shock at, you know, at, at the level of detail and the level of vulnerability he was going to. Um, and, you know, I, I think about it often. Like, I, I felt like something special was happening while we were interviewing him. And, I, you know, you, as a filmmaker, you kind of, like, you, you just, at the time, you're just like, you don't want to mess with it. You're like, is something, spe- something good might be happening here, but, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to screw this up. Um. And, you know, interviewing him over that really long process, that like eight hours, uh, I think it was the first day that we interviewed him straight. Um, it was almost like therapeutic to him, I think, because like when, when we when we finished, it, it, like his shoulders just like sunk. You could almost see like this like, like tidal wave just like fall off of him. And he smiled for the first time in the whole day, you know, would be would be at the very end. And he became almost like jovial at the end of the day. And I was like, oh man, that's like, that appeared to me like someone who like got out of therapy almost where they're like, you know, they were, were just so, so down all day of uh, like while, whilst having to relive their entire life, which is not the easiest at all times. Um, it's a grueling experience. You know, you have to, you have to remember everything that happened. You know, we're not showing him things or reminding him of things like with, with pictures or video or anything like that. So you have to mm-hmm. do a lot of uh, searching your, of your memory. You have to do a lot of, you know, vulnerable speaking. Um, and he did that. And on the other side of it, like I said, he, 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 he really, it felt like a tidal wave came off of his shoulders almost. And, I hope that he kind of feels that way in general with this being out there. And I think he does because he's very like jovial right now and he's very happy right now. And I think that he's really like content and happy with the way that we present this. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by T Public. T Public is the world's largest marketplace for independent creators to sell their work on the highest quality merchandise. With over 1.2 million designs, the public is sure to have something you will love. Please support Matt's movie reviews on Patreon. Get access to exclusive content, request movie reviews and top 10 lists, and help support my work. Please click on the Patreon link in the description below. You coupled that, the, the great interviews with these archive footage, which mm-hmm. for me is incredibly interesting because when he um would talk about in his wrestling promos about wrestling with a with a freaking you know broken yeah. neck 
um, you think to yourself, oh, you know, that's just, that's, you know, really great kind of like, you know, material there, Kurt, but it's true. I mean, he actually went through sub substantial injuries during his Olympic career and later on his pro wrestling yeah. career as well. But you've actually have the footage of when this occurs during his matches on top of other great footage as well. There's a high school um, uh, football game, which he dedicates to his father there's a great footage of him with the Fox catcher team and, and Dave Schultz as well. Um, all these just amazing kind of like um, moments of, of insight taken at a time when people can record anything they want on any device they want to go back to that time of the, of the, of the nineties and especially like around the early nineties and 96 and such. Mm -hmm no one was really recording anything at that time, right? Um, what was the process like in hunting down all that stuff? Because I, I imagine uh, trying to find, you know, that footage would have been uh, quite the investigative task on your end. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a ton of work, but I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things to do is play detective and do that as part of the documentary process. Um, and I just, there's no feeling during documentary filming that's quite like finding a piece of footage. Sometimes a photo is just as good, but a piece of footage that nobody has ever seen before is a very special feeling uh, in the documentary process. Uh, you want to be showing um, footage that nobody has seen before, but perhaps has heard the story. Um, and finding that, you know, that, uh, of the of the various pieces of footage and, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I would ballpark that there's probably like 30 to 40, uh, you know, if we're including photos, many more um, pieces of archival that no one has ever seen before uh, in this in this film. And I would say that that, you know, that moment where he injures his neck at the 96 U.S. Open was probably the centerpiece. Uh, you know, it was like. Uh, you know the it was the most valuable for me um of all of the archival we got and the way i did that one specifically was uh and i love i love this about sporting events um there's so many photos taken at sport events and so many different angles of everything uh you know even when you go back and uh you know there you typically when you look like matt side like right directly matt side you'll see like 10 or so uh, photographers and videographers filming. So what I did was I just took like some distant photos that I found uh, of the mat and uh, I sent them to USA Wrestling and USA. I said, can you guys identify any of these photographers or, video or videographers? And they could, they could identify, I believe two or three of the 10, um, you know, some were from other countries, various countries and stuff, uh, but they could, uh, they could identify two, two or three of them. And one of them actually, it, it actually ended up being very, um, um, very helpful in two with, through two different individuals. One was a woman who was taking photos right next to the mat, and the other one was a uh, a man who was obviously taking video. And he went down to his basement for us. It took him a while to convince him to. It took us a while to convince him to even walk down to his basement. <laughs> but once we did. He blew the. He was like Gandalf in the Fellowship, like going through all like the old books, and um, yeah. but he 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 pulled out that beta tape from '96, and no one had ever even digitized that before. I doubt. I'm not even sure anyone has had, had even watched it before. And uh, he watched it, and he and he sent it over, and we digitized it, and we were like, oh my god, there it is. There, there's the moment. So to have moments like that and, and you know the resolution was perfect and like we're talking 1996 and like you know it, it was just it was just a special moment and then a photographer who was matt's out at the same event also somehow like pulled these negatives out of her attic and somehow one of the negatives was like the exact moment that kurt was like bent over like face in pain uh after the injury and that probably is my favorite photo find of the movie as well uh so yeah i just when it comes to finding archival, uh, you know, the, the resources out there these days through the internet are just, they're vast, amazing, and powerful. And it's a fun process to me. It's so, so, so I, I go in and I kind of 
I don't like to give up until I find what I'm looking for. Um, and in many of these cases, I did find what I was looking for. It's only one I didn't find. There's only one. And that is Kurt uh, as a broadcaster in Pittsburgh after mm. winning the after winning the gold medal, but before WWE. And I was so, so sad that they got rid of this footage because so many news sources keep the archival footage somewhere. But man, did I dig everywhere. I dug everywhere over the course of like a year and I just couldn't find it. I, I found like a, a couple little clips because he was widely known as like the worst broadcaster in history. Um, and I really think it could have been like one of the most, one of the funniest documentary sequences. And they said the first night, the first like week or so, especially was like just a catastrophe every night. And I can't even imagine what that footage would have, uh, uh, how great that footage would have been. But that's the only one that got away from me. <laughs> I was able to get the rest of what I wanted to find. Where does when does WWE get involved? Because did you yeah. already have your film done, assembled, ready to go, and presented in, or do you show them like a rough cut? And then, then they're like, okay, we're going to help you out with uh, distribution, maybe some extra funding. How does that all, that partnership kind of happen? It's a great question. Uh, so I would say the film was about 90% done editing wise um, and no music. Uh, just the, the, what we call temp music was, 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 was in the movie at the time. So I would say overall, the movie was probably 85% done, 80, 80% done. And, um, we show WWE earlier than anyone else. They were the first people we showed it to. And the reason we did that was because we needed to license their footage. We needed to mm -hmm. license their archival footage from, from the WWE. We, we, we had, you know, we had grabbed it all ourselves and their response, which definitely surprised us. Uh, the very next day was that uh, they wanted to buy the movie instead um, and we, you know, it, it, it was for a, you know, a fair price for competitive for, for documentary. And we were happy to oblige because it would have been very difficult for us to uh, pull off the task of um, rejecting them and then, uh, you know, coming back and licensing their footage, which, uh, you know, in documentary, you know, uh, candidly, there's not the most money in the world in documentary. And uh, licensing footage is a very, very expensive process. And we already had to license enough in this movie. <laughs> and to have to, 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 to free ourselves from the burden um, or to free any other potential distributor from the burden of having to license that footage was big. And um, WWE was, was, uh, was, you know, was kind enough to... Um, obviously let us use that footage for free since they own the movie and um and they acquired it and they they acquired it uh and i i will give the wwe this their their notes were minimal to me um they they really let me keep uh the you know the essence of of what we wanted to keep in there i think it's really uh, fantastic as well because i'm hoping and i'm sure this may, may be something that you've experienced that uh, maybe pro wrestling fans are thinking they're going to see the greatest hits of Kurt Angle's you know pro wrestling career, but instead yeah. they they got or they're going to get a really engrossing uh, story of like triumphs and tragedies in this man's uh, career uh, career and, and personal life um, because the two are so incredibly intertwined. I think when it comes to being a yeah. like athlete of that caliber, one is not does not affect the other. Um, it's a it, it's a it's a commitment for life and. And I really encourage everyone out there, if you can get a hold of Peacock subscription, watch Angle. It's a fantastic documentary. I think, um, and hopefully, Alex, in the future, if if you don't make a, like an extended cut or a series out of it, that this has potential to be a, a feature film, biopic, like a dramatization of some sort. Now, who would play um, Kurt Angle? <laughs> I yeah. do not know. Because that's like that's like such a like a talk. We're not talking about any, you know, run in the mill kind of like uh, you know athlete here. This is a, a he's a special man and was a special athlete. Yeah. But I think there's potential there, and it's all in the the story that you laid out. So congratulations to you, 
congratulations to Kurt because I think you guys did fantastic, fantastic work here with Angle. Thank you very much, Matt. I really appreciate that. And I I, I, I agree as well. I would love to see it uh, get the scripted treatment someday. And I think Kurt would be excited about that opportunity as well. So we're hoping, we're hoping you never know. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.